Hey guys, welcome back. So getting into more talk about the new series Hulk Marines, which seems a bit ridiculous on the surface, but going throughout it so far, I'm noticing a number of references to some deep cuts, no pun intended, but there are some deep references to like your older Hulk and your older Wolverine issues, and as well as some of the more obvious ones from your recent issues of Weapon H. But on top of that, I thought it'd be cool if we go back and flesh out some of those details throughout the series. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so first things first, as far as setting the stage where everything is at at this particular point, with Dario Agar pulling strings in the background and he's like your arch nemesis of Weapon H. And it's pretty close between him and Dr. Alba. But with us seeing recently throughout the course of Weapon H series, him making the plans to send the Hulk and Wolverine after Weapon H, these plans eventually come to fruition, even though not quite exactly the way that he had planned. Because with Weapon H at this time who has secluded himself and his family, had been infected by the leader, which forced his wife and children to go into hiding, immediately after he was coincidentally approached by Bruce Banner, to which we found out was just a plan of the leader to spread this Hulk controlling virus from Weapon H to the Immortal Hulk. But even scaling back from this just a little bit, and happening alongside with the recent events in the Immortal Hulk, the leader, who at this time was being held prisoner by Shadow Base, he had been approached by Shadow Base to assist them in recapturing the Hulk. And it was also around this time that the leader had learned new information about the Immortal Hulk, including the new rules of him only coming out at night and a number of the other changes in the Hulk since Avengers No Surrender. But instead of fully cooperating with Shadow Base, the leader just figured I don't need you to do what I can do myself. And it was from that point that he had broken out and began his pursuit of the Immortal Hulk, which in the full scope of time frame took place around the time that Devil Hulk had been in the Immortal Hulk and destroying the Avengers just before going to hell shouty. But so with the leader using his classic methods of Hulk manipulation and infecting Weapon H and successfully getting Weapon H to infect the Immortal Hulk, only to find out that with Clay, aka Weapon H, that there was an additional factor that he did not expect, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But with this unforeseen factor causing Clay to snap out of his influence, and as a result, Clay went right after the leader, who at this point had threatened the security of his family, the leader is then suddenly saved by the arrival of the original Wolverine. And I mentioned in the previous video much how Greg Pak had made the first issue feel like a callback to like your first appearance of Wolverine back in Incredible Hulk issue number 180, but also I had to say that there's a bit of your Wolverine series in here also, because a number of years later, going out through the late 80s, through your 90s, to the late 90s, Wolverine had a solo series that went back and went more into depth with a lot of the previous narratives that we had seen happen with Wolverine, either by Len Wein or from Chris Claremont, and it gave us a number of these Wolverine narratives that more so just filled up the gaps. And amongst these narratives, in your Wolverine issue number 144, we go back to a time before Wolverine had even met the Hulk, still working with Department H, and he had just put on the yellow and blue suit for the first time. And doing so for him to make his debut as a superhero and also to be Canada's answer to Captain America. And so after just getting the suit, I want to say like his first night out, he was going against this small group of local terrorists in Ontario, Canada, to where in the middle of this confrontation where he's just wrecking these guys, and they're just utterly confused because they've never seen somebody take this many bullets and not die. But in the middle of this confrontation, which is like a day away from him actually meeting the Hulk, he is whisked away by the leader. Which throughout Wolverine's history, this is the first time that he's ever met the leader, which originally didn't take place place in your first appearance of Wolverine, but it was a retcon like in your late 90s. But with the leader doing this, he had also captured Hercules and Carcass, and Carcass, who's a deviant, your ancient race, spent some time in Olympia, did some stunt acting for the Eternals, and this dude's been all over the place. But the leader's plans with capturing all three of these guys was to use them to go up against the Hulk, in an attempt to give them orders to just beat down the Hulk and bring him back to the leader alive. But this attempt was never successful because soon they broke free from the restraints, confronted the leader, who then escaped, of course, <laughs> because I'm telling you he's faster than he looks. But nonetheless, within this amount of time that the leader had captured these three, without a doubt he has also collected information on them to a genetic level. But from there, jumping forward to your more modern day when Wolverine meets up with Clay, they immediately begin to clash because Clay, for one, is after the leader in order to protect his family, and Wolverine, who for some time has known of Clay, and mainly because of the recent events with him popping up on the news so much, but with Clay's recent appearances both as Weapon H and also using his claws in his human form, there's been a bit of confusion to the public because a lot of people think that they're two different people. And much like we had talked about in the Weapon H Built to Kill Millions video, many of the times when Clay showed up and popped claws in just a human-like form, very often people would make the mistake thinking he was Wolverine, which is something that Wolverine didn't like at all. And this is what Logan explains as his reason for coming after Clay. But after 
After a brief bout between Wolverine and Clay, Clay leaves Logan in order to go back after the leader so he can handle him and ensure his family's safety. And so as far as Sonya, Clay's wife, she's taking the kids and executing Plan C, which is actually them heading to this underwater base, which is actually a safe house that they built with the money that they got paid from Dario Agar. And down here in the subterranean base, which reminds me of Blue Marvel a lot, <laughs> like they could totally be neighbors. <laughs> but down here in this base, Clay's mother stays there so that much like before, if Sonya needed to leave, she would either make her way here or already be here in order to watch the children. And so at this point, when Clay makes his way to the leader, who is at the top of the hill again with the agents from Shadow Base, to where as it turns out, this was just another distraction from the leader, because when he gets up there, they find out shortly that this version of the leader was only a projection. And this image that Clay had seen from afar off was meant to draw him out here, away from his actual location. And just before Clay gets to slicing through the Shadow Base operatives, they are saved by the Immortal Hulk, which on the surface makes Clay think that he's working with the leader and it gives the shadow base operatives like two seconds of relief because Hulk tells Clay that I don't want you to tear through these guys because that's what I'm about to do. But it's also at this time that Wolverine steps in and takes Clay away from the madness because he's figured out one that Clay's not much good in the condition he's in but also this whole entire thing just feels like a setup and when he takes off with Clay the leader comes back in sends out his humanoids to go after Wolverine and Clay and he does so by throwing these little red like pellet things on the ground and they grow into humanoids but when he does this he also noticed some blue ones that also get thrown out as well which takes him by surprise because the blue humanoids just totally wreck the red ones and I can't help but think that there's a blue hulk red hulk subtle reference somewhere in there with the leader having created the original red hulk who would totally get wrecked by the blue hulk any day but as it turns out these blue humanoids were actually brought here by dr alba the scientist who created weapon h and when these two meet up initially there's hostility they're after the same thing they're in each other's way but it's made obvious pretty quickly that going up against the leader dr alba actually holds her ground and it's not like one completely overpowers the other it's more so that her technology has an answer to everything that he throws at her and in his case still playing it smart by not actually being here but even still he's able to recognize the intelligence of Dr. Alba to which in part is a compliment to himself because much of the breakthroughs that Dr. Alba has discovered much like we had talked about before on the Weapon H playlist a lot of her research was built on top of things that were discovered previously about the Hulk and Wolverine and when the leader sees this they start looking at each other all googly eyed like Ugh. like I could not imagine the leader like I don't even want to go there. All right, so just going a bit deeper into the studies of Dr. Alba, like we talked about on the Weapon H playlist, we had seen a number of instances where she had intentionally messed up trials with different volunteers that were brought in from Reverend Stryker. And she had mentioned back in those issues throughout Totally Awesome Hulk that she had already knew that a lot of these candidates would not work, which was hence her reason for pretty much murdering all the volunteers. But with her working with Weapon X at that time, the new Weapon X, which had been started back up, she was given access to pretty much any and every kind of information both from previous Weapon X trials and as far as the Hulk from Amadeus's DNA in addition to information she's collected about the leader over the years which once again is brilliant because when you're building something like Weapon H you don't want to reinvent the wheel, but rather build on top of the research that others have collected and create something that they can never dream of. And upon the leader meeting Dr. Alba and both of them having their suspicions of somebody else setting everything up and probably hoping for them to take each other out, and I don't mean like on a date, but I mean like destroying each other. <sighs> you know what I mean. But together they figure out that somebody else is pulling strings behind the scene and that they need to work together and combine their brilliant minds. And so at this point in time with the immortal Hulk who has pretty much just ran through the whole shadow base crew but after doing so he uses Agent NG to get more information on Weapon H in the location of his family. To whom at this time Clay doesn't even know because that was part of the whole plan C that he doesn't know where they're located in order to ensure their safety but after things calm down they will be able to reach him. But also around this time stepping away from all the madness they exchange information about everything that's led up to this point which leads Wolverine to further believe that this is all a setup and this gives Logan the additional motivation not only to figure out what's going on but with him also being aware of Clay having a family he wants to help him keep his family safe as well and while they're talking boom the Hulk just runs by like he's the fastest man alive and for whatever reason that was just super funny to me like you're having a conversation then the, the Hulk just goes jetting right past you like he's trying to fix the timeline or something but when they see this Logan mentions that the Hulk 
he's heading towards something and seeing him jet off like this is like he knows something and we need to know what he knows but at this point in time the hulk hasn't been caught up with all the information that both clay and logan have just from speaking to each other so he thinks that they're still working with leader and that they're trying to stop the hulk from getting the answers that he needs but the hulk also doesn't have the time to explain because since the immortal hulk you know he only comes out at night and when the sun comes up it's banner time again and with the hulk leaping into the water and turning back into banner like in midair clay and logan who are unsure if banner can actually swim going after him and it's here that they notice that the hulk actually led them to clay's family and at this point it's like well so much for the secret hideout it's like they're gonna have to throw the whole house away after this well not house but the underwater base but i'd say either that or they pretty much make this the base of operations for the hulk marines but from here and jumping over to remote shadow base fn34 both the leader and dr alba actually follow agent ng and they pretty much take over this base with alba's humanoids and it's here where dr alba explains to the leader the difference between clay wolverine and the hulk which has much to do with her reason for selecting clay in the first place being that he was the only one of the three who could actually control his emotions and it's here where dr alba mentions with both hulk and wolverine being completely uncontrollable she mentions here that it's time that they go back to the originals and add to them the research which she has developed in addition to the knowledge of the leader and turn the immortal hulk and wolverine into hulk marines because their emotional instability makes them more susceptible to control that they've realized they can never come to with clay and this is one of your main reasons why clay was able to overcome the virus from the leader but with the leader teaming up with dr alba and the leader having his research prior to from meeting wolverine i think it's gonna be pretty crazy where we see this go and even though it'll be a while before we actually see that play out i am pretty curious to see the outcome of these three going at it on a level playing field and of course not that it'll be anything permanent because wolverine having the phoenix force and then being wolverine and the hulk varenix ween whatever <laughs> like that would be too much but let me know you guys thoughts down in the comments below and of course we know like the whole purpose of these mini series is just to have a contained story to where at times some things do come out of and they sustain and last but for the most part it's just about going along for the ride but let me know your thoughts down below and we'll do it again in the next one all right later